Hi there, welcome to the show. My name is Guy Harrison. We're here today for Audio Technology Magazine, having a look at a mic pre from Australian manufacturer JLM Audio. It's a do-it-yourself mic pre. Comes in kit form. Uh, it doesn't have to come in kit form. You can also uh, pay to have it assembled at the factory. But uh, today it's all about DIY. So let's take a look at the mono. Uh, it's mono by name and mono by nature. It is a very versatile pre. Comes in its own little jiffy box, as you can see. It's um, very versatile insofar as you can change input transformers for a couple of different flavors. And you can also change op amps. Um, yeah, we're going to initially build it with the uh, Burr Brown op amp, uh, which with this op amp it allows it to uh, be battery powered, and there's room inside this container for some uh, batteries. And then we're going to show you how the variation in the kit, where you can actually fit uh, Joe's own 99V op amps, which are. Uh, I don't know a lot about them, but um, from what I've read on the internet, everyone seems pretty happy with them. They're a uh, Class A op amp, uh, pure path design. Uh, Joe refers to them as a uh, Neve on steroids. Um, I wouldn't give a Neve steroids myself, but, you know, could get angry and it could shrink its testicles. But uh, that's probably a story for another show, another time. For now, we're going to build the JLM Mono Mic Pre. Uh, you can have a look online at jlmaudio.com. Uh, there's a build thread there for this particular kit with some great pictures and step-by-step -step taking you through. I've printed that out, so we'll be going through that. A um, bit of background about myself. I'm not an electronics guru. Uh, I do know a capacitor from a resistor. But I did probably what you would do if you bought the kit, and I just jumped online and refreshed myself about a few things. Uh, yep, that's a diode, and I didn't know that before this afternoon. But uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to prove that you don't have to be an electronics genius to put these kits together. Um, they're reputed to be very simple to build. So yeah, let's um, bring the camera a little bit closer, and we'll run through some componentry. Okay, here we are, the magic hands. Watch the magic hands. Watch the magic hands. Uh, Let's run through the componentry that we've got here and what we're going to need to build this kit up. Okay, first of all, we've got the uh, circuit board. It's a nicely etched variety so we can see exactly uh, where things need to go. We'll have a closer look at that very shortly. Uh, we've got a couple of XLRs. Uh, we've got some resistors, which I'll come back to again in a minute. Some more resistors. Uh, we've got some capacitors in two different styles. Uh, then we've got some. Um, this is the uh, the Burr Brown op amp, and these are some toggle switches. We've got the uh, gain pot and uh, the DC input. We also have the input transformer. In this case, it's a VTX, as I say. But there's uh, some variations uh, on what you can put in there, but that's what we're going with today. And then we've got this, which are battery terminals. Uh, these are just some stickies to hold the batteries in place. Uh, obviously the batteries. Uh, these are some diodes. Uh, one chicken head knob for the gain pot. And then we have another pot for uh, the impedance. And we have some LEDs. Um, and then this is the 99V that we show. We'll build the kit up from the ground using uh, these components. And then there's a couple of things we need to change in order to uh, put the 99V in, but um, really not very much at all, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we'll leave those out of the equation for now. And we'll get to them later on. So the other things that you're going to most likely need to build this kit, um, Phillips head screwdriver, a flat blade, uh, a pair of side cutters, and some bigger ones and a very cheap multimeter. Um, okay, the first thing that I've done uh, already is resistors all have colored coded bands on them for figuring out what's what. Um, unless you have experience and you do a lot of looking at resistors, the colors can be pretty confusing. Um, so I've taken the liberty, as you should, of actually going through and buzzing them out. So 
I've got a uh, multimeter here that does continuity, so I can just strap across a resistor and have a look what its value is. 2.67 near enough to 2.7. 47 ohms. See here I've got these marked up as 10Ks, uh, 6K7s, 100s, 0.47K, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I recommend that you do that. Uh, get yourself a decent multimeter and it sure beats putting one in the wrong position. Uh, other than that, there's really not much to discuss about what's what. Uh, this is a, obviously a, a chassis for holding the, uh, the op amp. And that's about it. So let's have a closer look at the uh, circuit board. Uh, as I mentioned, there's um, a couple of different input transformers that can go on this board. Uh, the input transformer is fitted in this position here. Uh, and depending on which input transformer you put in, uh, changes a couple of uh, resistor values and things on the board. Uh, there's not many. There's actually only four. It's actually this one here, R pad. It's R gain and R load, and this R zobel here. So yeah, you just actually have to have a look uh, on the build thread, and it explains it to you. So you just go, I'm using the VTX transformer, and then it will just tell you what the values are for these these four. So let's go ahead and stick these uh, input transformer specific uh, resistors and capacitors to the board, starting with R pad. Our pad's value was 120, so uh, we'll grab one of those that I prepared earlier and we'll stick that on the board. And next up we've got our gain and it's 68 ohms, so we'll grab that one and fit him up. And for our next one we're concerned with is our load and that's a 10k. In we go. And last but not least is a C Zobel, which is a capacitor, uh, which needs to go into this position here. It's a 390 picofarad, so we'll just grab that and we'll pop that in. Okay, there we have it. There's all the components that are specific to this particular input transformer. Uh, that's one, two, three, four resistors and one capacitor that, uh, as I say, is suited to this VTX input transformer. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and populate the board uh, with all the necessary resistors. Uh, we'll do resistors first and then we'll get on and do capacitors. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that capacitor out of the way for a moment. As I say, I like to do um, my resistors first and then come back and do my capacitors, uh, basically because they're a different height on the board. Okay, now we go ahead and we uh, populate the board. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can uh, see that it's all etched very nicely so you can actually see all the values. So yes, you've already gone through and uh, marked out all your resistor values and written on them. So now we'll just um, populate the board. Uh, resistors first, so let's get busy with that. Okay, so there we have the board completely populated with the resistors. Uh, only really tricky one was uh, this one here, which is the R fuse. Uh, it wasn't actually, it says R fuse on the board and doesn't give you a value, but by having a look at, um, at the build thread, I could tell by a process of elimination that uh, that ended up being a 10 ohm resistor that went in there. Uh, other than that, anywhere where you see the word link uh, written needs to take a uh, just one of these shorting resistors. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I can see actually that I've just missed a, a uh, 470 there. Uh, before I did um, label these up and I mark that as 0.47k obviously that's 470 ohms as well so that's the one for that hole so I'll just pop him in and there we have it we're just about ready to uh, well we'll actually fit the diodes now is uh, the next step the diodes which are these little fellas we'll now uh, find with their position they actually have a, um, a white line on them and on the circuit board, there's also a uh, the positions for them are marked with a white line. So this is uh, these do have a polarity, and it's important to get them in the right way around. So yeah, we'll get them into their home. We've got uh, one that's going in here, which is uh, IN4007. That's actually uh, written on the uh, the diode itself. 
IN4007, so we'll take that. Uh, the legs on the diodes are much stiffer, so they take a bit of bending. Try and get them close to the mark. So it's 4007 in here. Paying attention to uh, where the white line is on the diode, and it lines up with the white line on the circuit board. And this one here, which is 27V, which by a process of elimination leaves only this one. This one actually has a black line on it, not a white. But, same idea, it must line up with the mark on the circuit board. That's our diodes in position, and we're ready to solder up. Uh, I might just have a quick run over of the, uh, the positions on the circuit board here, the basic layout. Um, good to grab the mic itself and put it over the top, gives you a good idea. So, what we have is, um, this is where our XLRs are going to be fitted. These positions here are for the toggle switches. Uh, in the centre here lives our, our tranny, our input transformer. Uh, our op amp will eventually go in this position here. And this is a position for capacitors. And that's about all. The LEDs come into these positions here and up here. And this is where our DC connector will go. So that's about all we need to know. Let's um, let's flip it over and uh, solder these in. So first, all the all the resistors are now in place. So we just turn it upside down, lay it flat, and we get to soldering. You will find if you actually if you've, after you've placed all these in, if you just bend them out a tiny bit, they will hold their position in the board a little bit better. Okay, solder time. Uh, another point worthy of note is uh, do try and get yourself a soldering iron with a relatively fine tip. You uh, you don't want anything too ridiculous when you're doing this is pretty fine solder work. So yeah, try and get something something with a decent small tip. And uh, not that you can't do this job with a general soldering iron, but um, better if you've got something that's uh, constant temperature and or variable. Um, yeah, if you're going to be doing a little bit of DIY stuff, it's only worth investing in a half-decent soldering iron. Uh, worthy of note is that now that I've fitted the uh, all the resistors in this particular configuration with the, uh, the VTX tranny, I have left this in resistors. A couple of shorting ones. Uh, I use all the 47.47K, I should say, 470 ohm. All the 6.7K, all the 51s, all the 100s. All the 10Ks except for one, and these are what I have left. Of what I began with. Yeah, personally I find it preferable to uh, do as many as you can and get easily at and then go and cut them off. Being very careful that you uh, are only cutting off ones that you have already soldered. It's dead easy to miss one. Just take care when you're trimming here that the um, you want to keep a couple of the legs off the um, diodes as they're much thicker as you want to use them later on to bridge uh, the ground off the, off the input transformer. So yeah, keep... Um, have a look if you ever look on the front here, these are where your diodes are and you want to keep the legs off them. Okay, now to uh, fit the IC socket. Uh, as you can see, it's got a little U shape in uh, in one end here. And that lines up with the U shape as it is marked on the board. So let's pop in that in that way. Now we'll slot these capacitors into place. Uh, they're 470, they do have a polarity, so make sure that you get the long leg into the positive hole, like thus. Get them all in there like that. 
Okay, we can now flip that up and uh, get to soldering then. Make sure that they're all nice and flat. And then as I say, get this fella back in and now uh, lined up as he was before. With the U-shape hitting the spot. fit it up. If I had my time again I would probably do this first and then the caps. Because it will be much simpler to sit it on its back. Okay let's just trim up the waist. Okay now it's time to uh, mount up the tranny uh, which is this beast. As you can see in the uh, on the back here it's got a ground which is this one here. Um, on the top of the back and that needs to be bent over so as it's flat and then the um, the leg that you saved earlier from the uh, bottom of your diode the thick one uh, that's going to be soldered on to there like thus and that bent flat as it does actually have to mount onto the PC board this way so um, yeah in its current direction it can't actually go down properly flat so because the pins keeping it out it will actually go in if you put it in the wrong way round, as there is a hole for the ground pin on that side. But that is the wrong way round. So the way that we want it is uh, so as the primary winding is facing the top here. So okay, we're going to make some changes. So we're going to go in there and we're going to bend this pin down. We're going to solder onto the back of it with one of these legs, and then we're going to bend it down. It's going to just going to poke through one of these holes, and we're going to solder it in there. Okay, and the fun and games begin. I must say I found this particularly difficult to do uh, after persevering and struggling to try and solder onto this existing pin for about 10 minutes. I decided the easier option was just to snap the existing pin off and manufacture my own pin and solder it to that lump of solder sitting on the bottom there. Uh, I'm happy to report this, had, this issue has been resolved in uh, version 2 of this kit which is now on sale. Uh, yeah, the... the uh, the VTX transformer just fits straight onto the board. You push it in and solder it. So none of this is necessary, uh, thankfully. And that can just poke up through either of these, any of these holes. These are all ground, so that's fine. Try it to sit as flat on the board as you can. Although that uh, solder joint will keep you off a little bit, so if once you've got the shape to the pin, you can actually take it out and work a little bit more on getting this nice and flat. Mm, these things are sent to try us. Really not the bill to end all that it sit right down, I'm just very fussy. But uh, yeah, that's the direction that you want it. So the primary is up here near the back. And it should poke through. As I say, any of these three holes is fine. And as the plan comes together. Here's uh, our toggle switches, uh, they're identifiable by, they have a little uh, U, a little notch here in the channel, uh, difficult to see but trust me they do, and we need to fit those U-shaped channels all facing away from the XLRs, so this is where your XLRs will, will fit here, and this is the U facing away, so we pop them in. like that. And next up we can pop in our XLRs. No, we haven't. There we go. You want to get, make sure that these switches are sitting flat and square. 
so give them a good extra little push down to make sure that they are all in flat then you want to flip over and you just want to solder in one of these one of these legs of the switches because we're going to do a test fit with the case now and make sure that the switches can actually move once they're in the case so yeah these these do take some pushing so give them a good little pop down like that to go right down and again They're good and flat and square and down. We just hit one leg of each of the switches just to hold them in position. Lovely. Now we just want to um, do a test fit into the case now. So we can push him back in. Okay, as I say, we just do a test fit and make sure that everything fits in there okay, which it does seem to be doing. Switches are all able to be functioning. So we'll just flip him back over and we'll just tie, pick up these solder points again and finish soldering in. Uh, next up, we probably want to um, fit the legs to the, the uh, DC connector. So we have this DC connector here, and we need we get the legs that we saved off the diodes earlier, which are here, and we'll stick them onto the ends of this. Uh, A little tip about this one. Um, the ring actually wants to be spun, so you want to actually take this and you actually want to um, take this centerpiece here and you want to bend it through the middle. So you've got three there, the middle one wants to bend through like that and then it wants to do this and in it pops into these slots, these holes here there it is with that center pin bending back through this middle of the other two and this is the blue and here we have the the yellow and so on and so forth with the other colours. Now the next step is to uh, grab a hold of the gain pot, which is this little number. Um, and we're going to just bend the legs over 90 degrees. So we just take these legs here and give them a bend. One. And the other thing we want to do while we're in here is we want to cut this tab, this uh, little tab here, off the gain pot because that gets trapped when you're trying to do the nuts up. It's a locating tab that's not needed in this design. So we get rid of that. Lovely. And now we're going to extend these uh, these three legs that we've just bent there. We're going to uh, stick some legs. So to extend these, these legs, we're going to use the uh, legs off the shorting resistors, which are these here. Uh, they're a little bit stronger than anything else. So we just get them. There you go, simple as that. Here's something that I took out before, just before I did the resistors. You remember that uh, C Zobel is a uh, capacitor that needs to be fitted, uh, that one. So we'll just stick him back in. He goes in here. Position just there. You remember that I took that out when I was uh, doing the resistors because it was bigger and I wanted to do all the resistors first, but it's got to be tucked back in here. It's uh, 
for this design it's a 390 picofarad. Now next up we want to, uh, we've done our legs for this, so we pretty much want to get everything now that uh, has to be kept at height. And that is uh, this gain pot, which only really goes in one way, it's pretty obvious. It's got to sit here in the middle. So we want to pop him in there through the 10k rev and log holes. And then we've already got this this still sitting in here loose, which is our DC connector. We now want to pop in our LEDs uh, with the long leg being the NA, which wants to go through the holes marked A. Red over here. Don't switch the colours because they are important to the circuit. And now we want to take all this and uh, sit it in the in this unit upside down. The old pliers will come in handy again here. We'll line up the game pot and drop it through the hole. And all this stuff. Line up each of the LEDs so they're sitting into their hole. Like so. And the same with the yellow. The blue, you want the game pot sitting in there as well. this and we'll just touch those points up and there we have it now everything should now be lined up to the right height including the gain pop as you can see popping through the holes there uh, more both the LEDs all in position at the right height. And there they are, sitting pretty as a picture. Now we'll uh, just see how that goes when we put it on top now. In a perfect world, everything should just go in through its hole. And we should see all our LEDs. We see our game pot. And you see our DC connector. Great. All on target. Little trick, we'll just go through and cut all the uh, all the erroneous extra length of those newly fitted pieces. Okay, next up we need to uh, fit ourselves some uh, battery terminal leads. Uh, it's these ones here that are supplied. Uh, they need to be approximately, I think, eight and a half centimetres long. Same with his friend. I'll match that up. Cut it off. Alternating, we want one with a longer male and one with a longer female. So we do that and that. By about half a centimetre. Let's give them a strip back. Here's some I prepared earlier. Good to go, we'll give them a twist. Don't get positive on that side. Don't get negative on the next to it. Now there's a couple of options here. Um, we're going to be using uh, the NICAD NIMHI batteries that have been supplied. Uh, with them, you have to um, you have to connect a joiner here at the back, which is this one here. There's a couple of pads there, and you just need to link those two. 
Uh, that allows, when you collect the power supply, that allows these to be charged in circuit. So we'll just make that link. And that's him nearly complete. Uh, there's been one extra emission, uh, sorry, extra addition to this kit, which comes late in the piece, but uh, they found this that it works with a 101 picofarad capacitor between the uh, in and the out here, I believe. So we'll just fit that in. Uh, there is one other 100 picofarad uh, capacitor that needs to be fitted that I have forgotten about. Uh, it goes just here uh, above the IC holder, so we'll get that one in there. Just here. And now I believe we've got it. We pop in the op amp. And that's our, our kit in working completion. Just the impedance pot to go now, uh, which is comes in this little spare bag here with the extra bits and pieces. So we'll just get that happening. Uh, this is another situation that is dependent upon uh, which input transformer you've used. Uh, we've used the VTX, so with the VTX you have to short a couple of pins uh, on this impedance pot. Uh, that is these two here. We have to uh, bridge them. So the easiest way to do that is probably just um, with the wire that we're going to solder with. We'll just uh, make it span across those two and pick up the last pin. Uh, just like that. Add the black and we're all done. Now these fit into a couple little tiny holes uh, just down beside these two caps just down here. Very difficult to see, but uh, if you have a close look, you'll spot them. And there's no polarity on this on the impedance pot, so just put them in either way around, doesn't matter. So there we have the circuit board all ready to fit into the case. But yeah, nice to see the back of the build. It's uh, <laughs> it's not difficult, but you do have to be focused and, uh, and make sure that you don't miss anything. I just had a couple of things slip by me, a couple of capacitors, uh, but no big deal. found them all out now and they're all in there, so there he is. They're ready to go in the box product, and yeah, look forward to seeing how it sounds. Now there's a bit of a lining up challenge. just need to uh, get that pot through there first. There it goes. Everything else should pretty much find its own hole. There we have it. Give a couple of capturing nuts on there to hold that stuff in place. And now just to fit the rest of the uh, external hardware into place, uh, screwing in the XLRs. Very good. Now the idea is that we are uh, stick these plastic strips on the bottom here of the case so as they hold our batteries in place nicely. Seems happy enough. And now we have this piece of Lexan which uh, is designed to go over here and stop shorting. It's not exactly to size so we'll give it a little bit of a trim up. There we have it, the JLM Mono, in its stock build, and uh, now the test, of the test of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. We'll give it some power and uh, see if it looks like it's going to power up. And we have the uh, JLM SMPS power supply. And you never know, there may even be some power in the battery, so let's just see if we're... Oh, what do you know? Everything's good. We have 
a blue LED, expensive blue. And now we'll just knock that off for a minute. We'll go for charge. And we're charging. Well, that doesn't mean that I've absolutely got it right, but I have no reason to suspect otherwise. So, uh, we'll let that charge for a bit, and then we'll uh, get down and do some audio testing. It's uh, certainly been a labour of love. Uh, you can probably hear the crickets chirping in the background, and that's because there's chips, there's chip, there's crickets chirping in the background. Well, thanks for staying with me for the uh, duration of the build. Um, yeah, everything went pretty smoothly. Pretty happy with the results so far. I mean, here we are, we're on charge. Uh, things seem to be working as they should. Um, uh, it's not been quick by any means, but uh, I think that's partly due to the fact that I'm videoing it all. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that on charge and uh, we'll get back to doing some tests very shortly. On the JLM Mono Mic Pre. Yeah, so I feel pretty gratified. Uh, it's been quite a few hours building, but um, everything is looking as it should. We have the charge light, We're charging, it's good news. We have power, can we throw power? Uh, we even have oh, phantom, when we throw phantom. So, it looks like I've got things right. Obviously until it passes audio, Maybe I've just created a pretty Christmas tree. But hey, that's the spirit right now, so let's see what it all looks like and sounds like, more importantly. I've worked hard for this, so I have no shame in enjoying it with you. Hello and welcome back. Uh, here we are with the uh, JLM Mono Mic Pre. Uh, 48 hours after the build. Uh, spent yesterday having a wonderful time playing with the fruits of my labour. Oh, that sounds shocking. Uh, I wouldn't say that twice, especially not in the front of a lady, but um, you, know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The fruits of my labour are obviously the uh, JLM Mic Pre, the mono. Uh, yeah, so I did some recording, uh, some acoustic guitar and some vocals, uh, with a range of microphones, uh, some large diaphragm valve mics and some uh, small diaphragm condensers. And... Yeah, look, compared to uh, the, the mic pre's on board my computer recording interface, it's just another world. Uh, much more refined sound, much silkier top end, and um, yeah. I mean, it put them to shame, but to be fair, it's uh, this this kit in its current build here with the, the Burr Brown op amps comes in at about $300 for this channel. So, obviously that's including a power supply, which you could use to power multiple ones of these, but for your first off, cost it's going to be about three hundred dollars and I, I, I'm guessing my I'm trying to think back now but my recording interface is probably worth you know, about three times that and it has eight mic pre's in it so not a huge surprise that um, that the mono is streets ahead um, yes if like me you've been holding off uh, buying a nice mic pre and you own some nice mics uh, do yourself a favor and go and buy yourself a nice pre and build yourself a mono because um, yeah, I've taken my mics into studios and always been so much more impressed with the sounds that I've got when I've gone in there to record with them. And after building this, uh, the sounds I'm getting at home are as good as anything that I've done in any studio. So yeah, uh, very high quality pre, highly recommended. But as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, very versatile and we're now going to uh, strip it down and build it up with its in its second uh, uh, build type, which is we're going to fit the JLM99V uh, op amps. Um, a more expensive op amp at about 75 odd dollars a piece, so obviously this is the more expensive option. Um, yeah, so we've got to strip this kit down, there's a couple of little component changes, uh, but basically it's going to, we're going to put some pegs on the board which allow these to mount and uh, pop them in for another sonic flavour. So, alright, time to get busy with that. Uh, back with you shortly. We'll go through the details. Okay, so we pulled him apart and uh, now to move on and fit the 99V op amps. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is, is just jump into here and get the uh, Burr Brown op amp out of this holder here. So we'll just leave him out gently. 
And then if you have a close look here, you can see uh, the, the, the pin points here, which uh, where the 99V is going to fit. It's one on either side. We'll just get this little uh, 100 picofarad uh, capacitor out for the moment. And we will be putting that back in because that does no harm sitting behind. Okay, now I've just had a closer read at the manual and it does recommend that we, uh, when we're fitting the 99V that we remove uh, this 100 picofarad uh, capac capacitor here at, uh, at C7. So we'll pop him out and uh, yeah, then we're ready to solder these pins uh, in on the other side. I'll just pop them through. So we'll just hit them with the solder. And put these points in, and that's where the uh, where the 99V op amp will then sit into. Uh, and it goes in one way, uh, six pins, and they will mount, slide into the pin positions that you've just made like that. So we'll get to soldering these up and uh, pop that capacitor out first. Slide our 99V Class A op amps into position. Now obviously they encroach in the battery area, so uh, no longer can you use batteries. They also uh, can't be run on batteries anyway because the voltage is not correct. So uh, we'll be sure to take these up so they don't short out or anything in the case. And but that's it. That's essentially your 99Vs fitted. Nothing else to change. And that's it done, except for just putting this uh, capacitor back across the input to output, which you can do on the underside here, and trim it up, and then we'll put him back in his case, and we're all done. So I've just spent a little bit of time with the uh, variation on the JLM Mono Mic Pre with the uh, 99Vs fitted. And what can I say, but wow, uh, very nice, uh, certainly a bit more coloured than the uh, than the Burr Brown op amps were. Uh, yeah, I don't want to make comparisons to other manufacturers' equipment, but uh, the word's creamy and a nice high sheen on the on the top end. Yeah, just just really impressive. Uh, fabulous versatile mic pre. Uh, we filled it up with the with the Burr Brown op amp, and in that configuration, it can be battery powered uh, with some some uh, Nim High batteries installed. Uh, it can the charge in circuit. You know, very clever, very well thought out. I uh, can't fold it audio-wise or build-wise. I mean, go over and have a look at, uh, at Joe's website at uh, jlmaudio.com. Uh, there's lots of different mic pre's. A bit of a hallmark of, uh, of the pre's that, uh, that Joe designs is that they can mix and match input transformers uh, from the likes of OAP, uh, Lundahl, Jensen, to give you a couple of different flavors on the input, and then op-amp variations as well. Uh, it can look a bit daunting on the website at first because there's so many options, but uh, do give Joe a call. He's a wealth of information. Uh, he's an engineer himself, so you know, talk to him about what you're trying to record, what you're trying to do, and he'll advise you on, uh, on what to buy. Uh, so, yeah, can't say enough good things. The JLM Mono Mic Pre from JLM Audio. Go and get yourself one, get your soldering iron out, and start your DIY career. I'm Guy Harrison from Audio Technology Magazine. Thanks for watching. See you later.